So this video is going to demonstrate a new feature in GPVDM called the script editor. Now previously if you wanted to run simulations you just clicked on the run simulation button and this just ran the simulation and you could look at the results um, like for example the JV curve there. Now um, very often you want to for example study something like mobility over a range of values or band gap over a range of values. And you, you could do this previously with the parameter scan tool. And what this enables you to do is effectively scan a single parameter over a range of values and sort of plot the results out. Now, this is quite flexible, but some people want, to want more flexibility and do some quite complex sort of scans, which is a bit hard to do in sort of an interface like this. So what I've done is I've built in a Python script editor. And this is accessible via the home and then the script editor button. And if you click on that, you get this script editor window. And this is sort of the default script that I put in GPVDM as an example of um, how, how to use it. And you could make more simple scripts, you can make more complicated scripts, it really is entirely up to you. Um, so the idea of this is this is effectively, this script um, is a, effectively a simple for loop and it counts from R, using i um, from 1 to 5. And as it does this, it's going to change the electron mobility there and the whole mobility of a simulation. And it's going, to it's going to set the value to 1 times 10 to the minus 7 and then multiply that by i. And for the whole mobility, it's going to set the value to 1 times 10 to the minus 7, multiply that by i and times it by 2. So this is just an example of sort of chaining two parameters, not to the same value, but to very slightly different values. So I'll just go through this line by line so you understand how it works. So um, this function here called init, um, that will be called as soon as you press the run button. Now API, this is a variable passed to the function init, and this effectively allows you, the user, to access the internal functions of GPVDM. So we'll just store this um, sort of handle, I guess, to the API under self.api. Now we say to the, to, the, to the GPVDM, please make a directory called scan. So we're just going to call directory scan. You can call it anything you want, but I'm going to call it scan. And then we count from 1 to 5, so it's just a loop going from 1 to 5. It says 20 there, but I've just set it to 5. And then within this scan directory, we're going to make a subdirectory called scan, and then we're going to give it a number. And the number will be the current number of the loop, and then set that to a string. And we're going to then make that subdirectory using that api.make directory call. And then we're going to use the api.clone command, which will clone the current simulation directory. So um, this, whatever, whatever the simulation is, it'll clone this into that simulation path. And then we're just going to print out what our current mobility is. Then we're going to use the api.edit um, call, and we're going to use this to edit the density of states zero file. And we're going to set the value in that file, so um, for mobility to, which is set by this hashtag, to this value here. And then again, here, and I'll go through this in a bit more detail in a minute. And this value, and this line here, sets the um, sets the uh, the value of whole mobility and density of state zero file to this value here. And then this adds the job or this effectively this simulation directory to a list of jobs we need to run. And this call here will run all the jobs um, that you've added to the list to run. And we've got here something that says callback self.finished. And basically this says that when you finished running all the simulations, call this function here and I'll print the word finished. And then finally, it, there's this final command called api.build multiplot. Um, and then what this, what this command does is it effectively searches through the whole simulation structure. So if you've made sort of 100 simulations, it will gather together all the JV curves, all the, all the charge density voltage curves, all the, all the curves that are basically the same, and plot them together in, sort of in, 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 in single files so you can sort of very easily examine um, stuff as a function of... Uh, of, of, of the parameter you're, you're looking at. Now, we'll just run this, and we'll, we'll come back to these two commands here, because that's really the crooks of this. We'll come back to those later. So let's just run this and just see how it works. So it's running. So here it is, it's running, and you can see my, it's running across multiple CPUs. So it's here, it's used four CPUs to run it, then two CPUs. Um, let's check if it's still recording. Um, and then it's finished. So if we then click um, plot, plot file here, so let's expand, so just click plot file. And we made, we made those simulations in the scan directory, so we double click on that. And you see here we've got all these sort of these multicolored um, curves. So what's that, what, they've been generated effectively. So let's just take jv.let, let's double, double click on that. 
So here are all our JV curves as a function of mobility. And you can see this directory there, and this is the, um, the data file, so jv.dat. Or we can plot, I don't know, um, charge.dat, for example, and look at charge as a function of whatever parameter we're scanning. Um, these, these files here are generated using this api.build multiplot command, um, and effectively they're just copies of um, whatever is in the individual simulation subdirectory. So here are the files we've generated, so there's one, two, three, four. Um, so if we look at the individual curves now, that's the individual curve, and then this would be the curve plotted together. Now, you might, the, the key question to ask, so that's, that's all fine, but the key question to ask is how do I know that this DOST file and this command, how do I know, and, and this, this hashtag refers to mobility, how, how, how do I know this? Well, there's a very easy way to find this out. The thing about um, .gpvdm files, all the simulation directories, is they're just zip files renamed. And in those zip files, or in the .gpvdm file, are these files that make up effectively the, the configuration of your simulation. So, for example, all the electrical parameters are stored in dos0.imp. DOS now, to try and understand which hashtag is which, I've made this new function called the hashtag dictionary. So if you click on that, what it will do is it will bring up, for your specific fit simulation, a list of the files contained within the sim.gpvdm. And if we go down to dos0.imp and click on that, it'll expand it, and it'll give a, des a description of um, what is in that file. So for example, here we've got um, so what the hashtag ntrape, and uh, this is, it says here, is, it says the electron trap density and it's currently this value here. Or if we go down to e -trapy, that's the electron tail slope, and here it's got, here it's got the unit, and this is, this is the value. So by looking at this, you can basically figure out um, uh, what parameters do what. So here's, for example, the band gap, and you can figure out um, what to scan. So let's sort of, I, let's have a, a look at another example. So let's, let's try and find, I don't know, um, contacts is another one. So here's contacts. So this device has two contacts because it's got a, a top and a bottom contact. You could um, access this in the interface using the contacts editor. Here we've got values of whatever the, the 5.8 times 10 to the minor 10 to the 26 um, holes per per meter cubed is the value of electrons on that contact. But this is defined in this file called um, oops called con called contacts there. And if we look down, we've got um, so contacts. There's two contacts. Contact name top left, which is what it was. Uh, in the, just let's see it, contacts, top left, that's the name of it, and then, whoops, and then we can find out what its charge density is. So where we, for example, to copy this, this value into our script, so let's get rid of that, copy that in there, so, co so contact charge density zero, and then change, um, and change DOS zero to contacts, then the, the charge density on the contact would be changed by these values. And obviously, so let's just delete that line here. And obviously, 1 to the minus 7 doesn't make sense, so let's set that to 1 to the 24. And then we'd be changing the charge density on that contact. Um, so, yes, that's it really. Um, I, that really explains. Um, oh, the final thing I think I will, I will show is I'll just show you what's inside a GPVDM file. A .gpvdm file. So if we go to simulation, and you could do this obviously. So that, that this is the the simulation directory that we're currently running our simulation in, and this is the .gpvdm file. So if we rename that just for the sake of it, we we'll call it .zip, and then double click on it. Th these are actually the files within that. So if we go down to .dos0 and open that um, with a text editor, this is actually uh, what's in the file as a, as a text file. So it's literally just a ser series of hashtags followed by um, the number. And this is exactly what's displayed. Uh, so if we just get this up here. So this is exactly what this interface, I'll just, uh, there we go. Yeah, so this is, this is exactly what this inter interface here is displaying. So, oh no, whoops, let's go for a DOS. DOS zero. So here we've got, um, you know, entropy, entropy. So this is just a representation of these text files.
So I think that's it really. I hope you, you find this feature useful uh, in automating your GPVDM simulations. And if you've got any feedback, do let me know. So thanks very much for watching.